thanks for joining me. In this video segment, what we're going to be doing is looking at um, density in experimental data. And so let's jump right into this first one. When you see that, a, a liquid fills a graduated cylinder to the 445.8. Let's list our givens. That tells me that the volume of my liquid is equal to 45.8 milliliters. Now they tell me the empty graduated cylinder weighs. So that says my mass of my graduated cylinder is 26.5 grams. So read your question in fragments. As soon as information is given, list it. List it under your givens. Then it just reiterates, when it's filled with the unknown liquid to the 45.8 milliliter mark. Well, we already knew that the unknown liquid was at the 45.8 milliliter mark. Then it says that the mass of my graduated cylinder plus my liquid is equal to 70.0 grams. Then it asks us, what is the density of my unknown? Now I've listed my givens. Check your units. Grams and milliliters are very reasonable for density, so we don't have to change them. Uh, now, many of you are going to look at this and right away see, since we listed our givens this way, that I need to do a calculation. So to do my density, I need my mass of my liquid alone over my volume of my liquid alone. I have my volume, but I don't have my mass of my liquid alone. Most of you immediately, intuitively see, well, to get my liquid, I have to take away the graduated cylinder. So I have to take 70 minus 26.5. Sorry, there was a little fruit fly running around there. And I am going to get my mass of just my liquid, okay? Uh, so 70, I didn't grab that number, so let me do that real quick. 70 minus 26.5, I did it all in one step. 70 minus 26.5 is 43.5. So that means I've got 43.5 grams is my mass of my liquid. So 43.5 divided by 45.8 grams per milliliter is going to give me my final answer. So I'm going to just write it up here because I'm, I'm out of room a little bit. And um, so I get zero is my final answer, 0 0.950 grams per milliliter. If you're my student, I dare you find my math errors. I would really appreciate that one. All right, let's try it a different way. If you're collecting data in the lab, you're going to put that data in a table. Now, it's common to do a volume of an irregular object by displacement. So what you would do is you'd have your graduated cylinder and you fill it to the mark with water. Okay, then you drop the object in and that's going to displace, because the, the object has volume, it's going to displace the water. So the difference is going to be the volume of your object. So the volume of water that is displaced correlates exactly with the volume of that irregular object. So in this case, to find my density, I need my mass of my stone divided by the volume of my stone. Well, I have a weigh boat and weigh boat plus stone, so to get the stone alone, I have to subtract. Okay. To find the volume that's displaced, I have to take my final volume after the object has been added and I have to subtract the initial. The difference is the volume of the object. Okay, So if I did that, and if I did my math right, I get 2.6 grams for every milliliter 
is the density of my object. Remember, this is the volume after I've put the object in minus the initial volume of water. That difference that the water took up, that displacement, is my volume of my object. Okay, so that's kind of a couple of the ways you can use density. A couple of other uh, things about density that are important to know, and that's the density of water. It's pretty much expected by most people, most teachers, most professors, that you memorize the density of water. Now, density is temperature dependent, right? Density is grams per milliliters. If you increase a temperature, you increase the volume and therefore you decrease your density. So density is temperature dependent, but it's a very slight change with water and so it's not unusual for um, teachers and professors to say, assume that it's 1.0 grams per milliliter unless you're told otherwise. So I've got a density of one. You could think of this as a proportionality. I've got one gram for every one milliliter. How many grams would I have for 500 milliliters? Okay. You can also consider density. It's a double unit. I have an equality. One gram for every one ml. So I can do dimensional analysis given a density. 500 milliliters. I want to get rid of milliliters and go to grams. The density tells me for every one gram, I'll take up a volume of one milliliter. Okay? So it really depends on, on you know, what's going to work best for your mind. All right? Now, the other key thing that you need to know about density is that substances that are the least dense will float, okay? The ones that are the most dense will sink or be on the bottom, okay? So let's take, it, take a look at an example of this. I have a substance. It has a mass equal to 3.2 kilograms. It has a volume equal to 19.5 milliliters. That's another way by identifying those, you can list your givens, so to speak. Check your units, kilograms, not so much. Milliliters, yes. We have to convert kilograms to grams. Three, two kilograms. I want to get rid of kilograms and go to grams. So I get three, two, zero, zero grams. Do math, show math. My density then would equal 3,200 grams for 1950 milliliters. And I got 1.6 grams per milliliter. So the density of my object is greater than the density of water. And no, it's not going to float. It's going to sink. Okay. Now, what if we put it in mercury? Mercury is very dense. 13 grams is squeezed tightly into one milliliter. So assuming the object didn't dissolve in the mercury or react with the mercury, that's important because if it dissolves or reacts, we, we, we can't compare densities, right? In this case, it would float. And that's because the density of my object is less than the dense density of my mercury. So my object would float. So this is kind of processing the experimental qualitative ways um, that we would be working with and observing density. So I hope this helps. Good luck as you journey through chemistry.